Hello, Cricketers, and welcome to Cricketing with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda, and thank you so much for joining me today. In today's tutorial, I will be going through all of the eight pieces that come with the StarCraft 8-in-1 heat press. This is the newest heat press by StarCraft. It is a 8-in-1 swing away. The plate, the size of the plate is 12 by 15, but we will get into all of the spe specifics in this tutorial. I will also answer some of the questions that were posed during the live event that I did not see until after the live event. So I'll just interweave those into the discussion as we go through with the heat press. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's take a look at the StarCraft 8 and one 12 by 15 swing away. Before I even turn it on, let me just note that the upper heat insulation cover does not get very hot at all. I do think that is a safety feature. At the top of the heat press, you have your um, handle and that's just to open and close it. The back in the back behind the handle is the knob. You use that for pressure, you know, either to increase or decrease the pressure. Um, and I don't feel like it's hard to move that knob. There are two handles there <clears throat> at the top on the right. I do feel like that is for portability. Once again, the top platen um, does not get very hot. I do feel like that's a safety feature. Um, so you're not, you know, in fear or in jeopardy of burning yourself. There is a warning label at the top though. One thing I do, I did note is that there are two silicone pads that came with the heat press i left them in place just as they were i love the fact that this heat press is very easy to maneuver and the biggest bonus is the fact that it does a full swing i love that i feel like i can keep my heat press in the middle of the room or not it, it, that it doesn't have to be pushed all the way back to the wall and that gives me full functionality of it when I turn the heat press on, I will note that it is set already to the highest temperature, which is 410 degrees Fahrenheit. And um, I just set it there to see what the highest temperature would be. Um, one thing to also note, there are four buttons on the top. There is a plus button, minus button. There is um, the third button is called the uh, setup button. And then at the bottom, there's one that's called the mode button. You do have the ability to set three different modes and keep those settings saved and i love that i've already saved my settings for my caesar easy weed just by pressing the system button and then decreasing the temperature to the desired setting and decreasing the time to the desired amount of time that i need to press when i'm using caesar easy weed so i absolutely love that so I'm just showing you how to do that just by pressing the setup and then going to your desired settings and then holding that mode button and it'll save your setting for you. Okay, so that's what I'm doing here. Just showing you how to do that. I have my first mode saved and I within this tutorial, I actually saved another mode for sublimation. I went all the way up to 400 degrees. And of course, with sublimation, typically your time is set at 60 seconds. Then I hold that mode button and it saved that. So I have two modes saved and the third one, I'm just not sure about what I'm going to do with that one just yet. Okay. The third row of numbers is just the uh, number of times the heat press has been actually pressed. And um, that's what that, that number shows. That's what the count shows. Okay. Right here, at uh, right above the power button is something that is called a, I don't want to tell you the wrong name, it is called an overload protector. I will say I do have a number of heat presses in my house. I think I have five or six, and I've learned the hard way that I can only have one on and in use at a time, because if I use more than one at a time, it does uh, trip my circuit breaker so I have to go downstairs and then reset it so I did notice that you know I can only use one at a time I, right here I'm explaining that I love the functionality and the ease of use and now we're going to move on and look at the mug press the mug press that comes with the heat press comes with four attachments there is the nine ounce mug attachment, the 11 ounce mug attachment, the 12 ounce mug attachment, 
and the tumbler sleeve. The difference between the nine ounce and the 11 ounce is the thickness of the foam. And I had to, cause I kept looking at it and I was trying to figure out how are they different. So this is for the nine ounce and this is for the 11 ounce. <clears throat> the mug that I'm going to be pressing tonight is a 15 ounce Cricut brand mug, but I'm going to use the 11 ounce sleeve for that. All right, when you get the mug press, it does come with four screws right here at the top. I've already taken them out because I wanted to have the four attachments out for you to look at. And I'm gonna show you how to, I'm gonna put the attachment back together and get this all connected. Okay, so I'm using the 11 ounce size. I'm gonna move these other ones over here to my other table. I'm also going to move this mug press over just a little bit. So this is the piece that will connect to the actual heat press. And so what I'm going to do first before I connect that is I'm going to, let me get my mug, I'm sorry. I'm going to put my mug in here first. I already have a design on my mug. I'm using infusible ink that came in the last Cricut Bright's mystery box because I am determined to use my infusible ink. Um, okay, and I'm just going to slide this back in and I'm going to just get these lined up so that they so that I can put the screws back on there. All right, so there's that. And I put the screws in my pocket so I wouldn't lose them. Um, it's just four screws that look like this, and it's important to hold on to these. Um, of course, you know, when you're, this is not in use, it should already be attached, so that should not be a problem. But I can imagine this would be hard to explain if you needed to replace one. Okay, I'm just going to slide these back in. I'm just going to twist them in as tight tight as I can. All right, and I'm going to do the same thing here. Hopefully I'm not covering up your view. Okay. So you just line up the, the holes. All right. Line this up. Notice that my mug press is still not attached, not yet. Okay, so I have my mug in here as snug as a bug in a rug. Now I will, and my heat press is also not on, not powered on. It's plugged up, but not powered on. Okay, so I'm going to just remove this. Hopefully I'm not covering up your, your view. Okay, I uh, pulled this out. I thought, I thought it wasn't twisting, but it actually was. So now I'm gonna connect this here with these four connectors. I'm not at a good view. Let me go around to the other side. Oh, okay. It fits in there perfectly. I was at a bad angle. All right, so that is connected. And now there's one other piece that needs to be connected and that is this cord right here for the timer. So under here, there's a piece that just needs to be disconnected. So you just connect this cord where the other one used to be, where the timer cord is. I want to power it on. There are those three beeps. I'm going to press set up and I'm going to bring my temperature down to the recommended setting is 360 degrees. 
and the recommended time is 180 seconds. So I'm gonna press 100, go to 180. I like that. Okay, it's gonna heat up. Okay, it's reached the desired temperature. I'm gonna let it press for 180 seconds. I do have the gloves that came with this heat press because I do believe that um, this is going to be hot when it comes out. And I also have the tweezers that came in the last Bright's mystery box. See how sharp they are? Super, super sharp. So I'm excited to use these. We shall see what it does with this infusible ink. I am excited about it. I will speed this part up. We are coming to the end of the timer and we will see. Let's see. That's always a good sign. Okay. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see. Let's see, shall we? Now I can feel the heat coming from this mug, even with these gloves. Um, and I, you know, I'm not gonna let it, I'm not gonna let it cool down. I've never used these tweezers before. I've never used these gloves before. doing well with those tweezers so we're going to just peel it let's see what we come up with OMG OMG I love it I take it a lot my name is Delanda and I'm an over taper it's beautiful it is beautiful and if you don't already have a mug press and you don't already have a heat press, this is an excellent, excellent option because you will have the best of both worlds. The retail cost for this heat press is right at about $449. Um, but if you do the math on a heat press plus a mug press plus a tumbler press plus a hat press plus a plate press, this is a steal. Oh wow, oh wow. This design is in Cricut Design Space. That's where I got this from. I am a Cricut Access member. And this is what the mug press did. Look at that. It is beautiful. Okay, so now let's look at the hat press. I have disconnected the mug press. I'm also going to disconnect the timer function, the timer cord, and I'm going to replace the cord back where it belongs. I'm going to move my heat press mat, and also none of this is none of this is hot. All of this is still cool to the touch. Now let's look at the hat press okay there are two pieces that come with the hat press so the hat press will need to be attached to the heat press so i'm going to let that cool down for about 15 minutes and then i'll come back and show you how to attach the hat press okay for the hat press attachment what i have to do is 
remove the actual heat plate. I have to remove this. There are four wing nuts here at the bottom. I'm going to remove them. They are not tight at all. And trust me, if they were, I would say, you know, let me get my husband to help me. I'm going to remove these. Definitely say, just like I did with the other four um, bolts, keep them safe and secure because you will need them. My heat press is turned off and it's not connected here. I'm going to just lift this up and remove it completely. And according to the instructions, I am going to use, put the bottom of the heat, the hat press here. Use two of the wing nuts to secure this in place. So I'm just securing the other wing nut. And then when I finish doing that, I'm going to have to remove the wing nuts from the top of the heat press there are two wing nuts at the top so let me get those this bottom one secure first and i trust me if i'm able to do this anybody can do it there are two wing nuts and they are not tight at all i just removed both of them and i didn't secure the other side um when i removed the first side so that's a rookie mistake so you'll see that the heat, the top of the plate is going to drop because I, I'm not used to doing anything like this. And I let one side drop instead of holding it securely at the bottom. See that? And so you just take that off and make sure to hold on to those two wing nuts because you're definitely going to need them. Now, take note that my heat plate is already cooled off but i still didn't want to put it face down on my table it is cooled off and if it weren't i definitely would not put it there so make sure that you know safety first stay safe and if yours is even warm i would suggest not you know moving it until it's completely cooled off so now i'm going to take two of those wing nuts and you know put them at the top so that the top portion of the hat plate can be secured in place and I just you know I turned them until they were as tight as I could get them um, with the knowledge that I'm going to have to you know loosen them when it's time to move that hat the top of the hat plate so I just did it as tight as I needed to for this portion of the tutorial and with the knowledge that I'm not actually pressing a hat tonight I connected the hat plate to the heating element just to see what it would um, how it would all work together and I put a hat on there just to hypothetically see what the fit would look like with the knowledge that I was not going to put an extra design on this hat this hat already has a design curiosity got the best of me and I just wanted to see what the settings would look like with this hat press so I put a hat on there and you know I already have it connected I put parchment paper as if I'm actually putting a design which I'm really not I set my heat press to the recommended temperature which is 390 degrees and I also set the timer to 40 seconds I actually went down to 10 seconds I just wanted to see you know what would happen uh, with the countdown because the timer cord is not connected in the back and so if you don't reconnect the timer cord of course nothing will happen there and you need to have that reconnected so it's very important to have your heating element all the way cool down and to have the timer cord connected in the back as well as the heat plate heat press i mean hat press attachment connected just like it was when i did the mug press Right here, I just sped this part up. I wanted to see how long it would take to put the heat press back together and all together um, putting the plate on and you know moving the pressure back up and putting the top plate on, it took about two minutes. I looked all over for those 
two wing nuts and I was getting so discouraged. I looked all over my house and guess what? They're right here. <laughs> so if that happens to you, you'll know where to look, okay? So there's that. While I'm screwing this down, let me answer one of the questions that came up during the live event. One question that I got asked often and that I totally missed was what is that that's holding my vinyl? Um, that is called a vinyl over the door vinyl roll holder. And I got that from Michaels. Um, one side of it is for my heat transfer vinyl and the other side I use to store my adhesive vinyl. I store my sheets in a different place, but all of my rolls are here. Even if they've been cut, if they are still mostly full, I keep them here in that vinyl roll holder. The plate press is the last of the eight in one pieces of this eight in one press that we have not looked at. So the plate press actually comes with two sizes. There's a 10 inch size and on the bottom, there's an eight inch size. And according to the directions, it says that you are supposed to get your plate. I'm gonna put that, your actual, I'm just using the paper plate as an example. So I'm not ready to press a plate just yet. You're gonna get your plate. You're gonna take your sublimated image. So just sublimation image. I will cut around the image and I put that down here on my plate. I will decide on the size that I'm going to be using. So either the eight inch or the 10 inch size, I'll take these silicone covers off. Take both covers off, okay? And then you put that, put that down in the center of the plate, wherever you're gonna press it. And then you use some kind of protection for the top of the plate press. Let's see, it says, to use heat of pressure transfer sheet. Okay, cover with the transfer sheet. So I'm assuming maybe a Teflon sheet. And then you would, you know, use your press and you would close it and press for five to seven minutes at 400 degrees. And of course, you know, pressing something for five to seven minutes, that's a very long time. I've never pressed, I haven't pressed anything for seven minutes. Uh, Cricut mug takes five minutes, so that's and that's a long time. So after it comes off, you would have to have your gloves. You would remove the plate, and then you know give your actual plate time to cool, and then your image should end up on your plate that you're going to do your sublimation on. Okay, so hopefully that helps. Let me give you my final thoughts. So hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. I'm sure is more helpful than the live event that I will definitely link below. And if you have an hour and a half of time to, you know, give me, go ahead and, you know, watch it and laugh along at me, laugh with me. Um, either way, cricket crafting should be fun. So I don't mind you laughing at me. Now, let me tell you my, the things that I love about this heat press. I love that it does a full swing around. I said that during the live event. I absolutely love that I can swing this all the way around. I love the fact that this top platen does not get very hot. If it does get hot, I haven't noticed that yet. It does say, you know, that this, this is a hot surface, but I haven't felt it get hot at all. Um, maybe a little bit warm, but definitely not hot. I love the fact that it comes with a mug press. I love, you know, this is the mug that I pressed tonight in this tutorial, and it came out fantastic, the same exact way that it would have come out with my Cricut Easy Press. Um, I love that it came with gloves. I love that it came with the tumbler press because I'm excited to get uh, to try that. I love that it is light, lightweight. I do feel that the base of this is very sturdy and I don't feel that there is a risk of it toppling over. Even when I have it, you know, out like this, I don't, I don't feel like I'm worried about it tumbling over. Um, I love that I can have three modes that are saved. And so when I want to do sublimation, I can just go to mode two. And when I want to use my Caesar Easy Weed, I can just go to mode one. I love that. Um, and I think that's about it. Oh, I also love that when I want to go up or down with the temperature settings, that I can just hold the button and I don't have to hear a beep every single time I press. I love that. 
There are so many things I love about this um, heat press, and I'm sure that you will too, especially if you don't already have a heat press and if you don't already have a mug press, because this is the best of both worlds. And um, considering that it comes with a plate press and a hat press, you just can't beat it. Quality, price, um, functionality, ease, you, you are in a good place for uh, if you go with the StarCraft 8-in-1. So hopefully this was helpful. As I said, if you did find it helpful, please consider hitting the like button, subscribing to my channel, and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. All right, I do plan to get a hat so I can try the hat press. I did just go through a hypothetical hat situation, but I definitely want to get started and try that. All right, thank you so much for joining me today. And... Thanks for watching. Bye.